All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. And right here, right now, we are actually live in full effect. And we have KT Gibson right here, live on the line. How are you doing this evening? Man, I'm doing amazing. Thanks for having me, bro. Hey, man, you are most certainly welcome, man. I've definitely been enjoying your music for a while now, man. So it it definitely just seems fitting to have you here live on the radio station Airways this evening, man. So thank you in advance for a bit of your time. Man, thank you. I appreciate it. And I, I, jumping right into it, man, I have to ask, because you're such a talented individual, you have such a an amazing, unique sound to your music, I gotta know, man, what inspired you to get into the music industry initially, man, because like I said, you are you have a very unique sound. When you put on a KT Gibson record, you know it's KT. Uh, I think more so me coming from Detroit, being from Motown was a big thing, because Music is so thick up there. You know what I'm saying? I was raised on like this amazing music, amazing talent, and it's a lot of competition. So, and I'm a competitive dude. So, ever since I was like 11, I've really been fighting for this. And I got to say, it definitely shows, man, just like you said, how you've been fighting for it and whatnot as well, man. You can really hear the passion within your lyrics. Hey, right, man, yeah. I- I push everything and put everything out of that pen, man. Most definitely, like, I put it all on the line with every record. Everything is 100% authentic and what I believe in or what I feel. I don't speak from anybody else's viewpoint, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's always straight from my mind. I feel like that's the easiest way to make music. When I was younger, I tried to make music to sound like everybody else, and it didn't get me anywhere because it wasn't me, you know? And then, as I evolved, and I understood just telling my story because my story is good enough. Everything changed. And I also read as well on the internet that you were actually a part of a hip-hop duo by the name of uh, N Difference. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners just a story behind that duo. And of course, how did yourself and Mav originally get connected and, and of course, form this like, this amazing duo? Well, uh, I had an apartment right next to his high school. I used to come over, make beats, and we would uh, build a studio in my apartment so he would make the music. And then after he get done making the beat, I already have a have verses of the hook done, and that's kind of where we started from and how everything built. That's what ended up having me, uh, that's the reason I moved actually from Detroit to Arizona, because he had moved out here, and everybody back home was like, hey man, you need to go out there and work with him and build more musically, and I'm out here now today. <laughs> and I know this, this question really isn't very, very based upon music, but when you actually moved from Detroit to Arizona, was it diff- difficult to actually really transition? Because as we already know, Detroit gets some pretty horrific winters, and of course, Arizona is is pretty well the desert. It's a, it's like, how can I put it? It's complete opposite, but it's like just as intense. Like our winter is just as intense as the summers here. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the winters are crazy. You in Canada, so you know, like it gets crazy in the wintertime. Out here in the summer, man, it's like it gets wild here. But if we only got it for about the same amount of time, like a good like three to four months, then the rest of the year is, is beautiful. And also, as well, going back to this the topic of indifference on Jan- on uh, sorry June twelfth of two thousand fourteen, you guys actually released the live concert album titled Live from Heart Plaza. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a bit more about this record. And of course, was it difficult actually putting together a live album versus you know your just your regular trans uh, traditional studio project? No, nah, not necessarily. What we really did was uh, we did that to. Uh, Pay homage and show love to our DJ, our big homie, DJ Vicious Vic. He was one of the first, if not the first, a part of the first uh, hip-hop group that performed at Heart Plaza downtown Detroit. So we wanted to, you know, show some love to him and show some love to the city as well and let them know even though we were out here, we were still holding down Detroit, still holding down Motown. And just, just touching base on this project, because the one thing I've always wondered about some of these live projects, because you guys made that album sound absolutely authentic, just the way it sounded. Uh, what did you guys use to actually, like, record uh, the, the sorry record this concert? Did you guys actually kind of have, like, a microphone capturing everything, or was it just a video uh, uh, converted into an audio file? Oh, uh, no, it was actually just, we did everything studio-wise. You know, like, it was all uh, pretty much... Mike, uh, Pro Tools, you know what I'm saying? Nothing out of the ordinary. And I gotta say as well, it definitely shows, man, because you guys definitely polished that album perfectly, man. Definitely sounded phenomenal. Thank you so much. 
And also, going into the, your solo side of things, on April 14th of 2015, you actually released your nine-track album titled uh, Bar City Blues. Can you t I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a story behind this album. And of course, where can we actually buy or stream ourselves a copy of it today in 2022? Bar City Blues was a... Uh... I got a bunch of the uh, a bunch of songs that I like, a bunch of beats that I really like, liked and kind of compiled them together, made like a mixtape. And I just really wanted to show people where I was bar wise in my creativity and take things to a different level because I feel like I was also I was always like worried about the having the best punchlines and you know what I'm saying like stuff like that growing up instead of worrying about creating a story and really really putting a song together and like with bridges and things like that. But that's what Bar City Blues is about. You know, it was pretty much like me showing myself coming of age. And you can get that on um what is it called? You can get that on SoundCloud. That's the only place Bar City Blues really is at. That's up for free on SoundCloud under K T Gibson. And also as well, in uh, sorry, on June 16th of 2026, you actually released the single uh, titled Work Twerk featuring New York City Days. I was wondering, how did yourself and NYC get connected? And of course, what was it like just working alongside uh, this individual on this amazing project? Oh man, Nice Days is my guy. Uh, he's actually produced a few records for me. And on this song, we was able to... Uh, this, that was the first time we worked together, and like uh, he jumped on a hook with me. It was amazing. It's always amazing working with that guy, man. He's a, he's a hard worker, just like I am. And we get in the studio, and we really gel together. Uh, it's actually we're due for another one. It's been a little minute since we worked together, so I guess I'm glad you said that because I got to tap in with him. We talk all the time, but we just haven't. We're both so busy, we haven't been able to put something out together. But that's my guy. It's one, definitely one of my favorite features. And I got to say as well, you could definitely hear your guys' chemistry on that project. So hopefully, you know, you guys can coordinate something and put another hit together, man. Because I definitely, def I think I'm pretty sure I can speak for the, speak for the uh, KT Gibson fans, man, that uh, you guys definitely have amazing chemistry when you guys work together. Oh, well, definitely. And we have a uh, song called Don't Know Me that uh, I have a video out for that was definitely like one of my favorite songs as well. Because uh, whenever you work with Nice Days, man, it's you, you definitely want to get everything that you would imagine because that man is he's a workaholic. He's gonna put everything on the line with him. And also, as well, June sixteenth of two thousand twenty, you actually brought, released the record called uh, the Seven EP Part Two. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a bit more about this album series, and do you actually have any plans to actually make a third third installment in the future? It's funny. I'm actually working on a. Uh, Seven part three right now. Seven is like seven is my I pay that's me paying homage to Tupac. You know, with the date and everything. Like that's me paying homage to him. That's my favorite artist of all time. So I compile like seven songs and I like I around the time I make seven I'm usually like just making music, making as many songs as possible. So seven E P three will be coming very soon. I'm gonna be dropping it next year actually on the same date. It's always gonna be on the same exact date. And I gotta say, the one song off uh, off the Seven EP Part Two that I really enjoyed was actually "Life Can Be" featuring uh, Denzel Davis. Man, I, I, another phenomenal song. Yeah, Denzel, Denzel's my guy. He's a hard, he's another hard worker, man. He's going crazy right now. If you get a chance, you should definitely interview Denzel too. He's going crazy. Yeah, and we work very well together. We, me and him and Bonnie G actually put a album out not too long ago called um, the THM Project, the Paid in Full. And we just really gel well together. That Life Can Be is probably one of my favorite songs of all time because I get to actually speak about how I feel about uh, the workforce, you know, and how these multi-million dollar companies just use us and use us and use us, and then the second we do something wrong, they just throw us away. That was my reason for Life Can Be. And I gotta say as well, like th that song is very inspirational as well, because it sounds bad. A lot of individuals in the music industry, it, that that's how they treat the uh, artists and, and whatnot, man. Like especially back in the '90s, uh, late '80s and, uh, and '90s as well, man. With these those record labels, they would kind of just use the artists, get the music, and kick them to the curb when they got what they wanted, man. It's definitely uh, th this industry is you know a blessing but also a curse at the same time. Most definitely is, man. It's like. 
you you fight your whole life as a kid to get a part of it, and then once you get into it, you see that it ain't all puppy dogs and rainbows. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's real different. But you just gotta swing with it and suck the punches and go hard as you can. And, and and that's one thing I like about this day and age as well. Like even like, like going back to when I just mentioned the blessing and a curse, man. Even with the streaming and Spotify, it, it gives individuals like yourself to be able to you know be your own engineer, be your own record label and whatnot, and start your own brand. But these these, these streaming sites are almost doing what the labels kind of did. Instead of giving you dollars, they're throwing cents at you, man. So hopefully somewhere down the line, at some day and age, maybe the industry can kind of get. Get get I wouldn't say get back to being normal, but relatively normal where artists actually get what they actually deserve. Most definitely. That would change the game if we actually got dollars instead of fractions of a cent for streams, man, because I'll be looking at my stream numbers. I'm like, man, if I had a dollar for every stream I had, boy, <laughs> we'll be on right now, super on. Definitely. Hennessy for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know what I mean? It wouldn't even break your pocket. Man, for real. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I that's one thing I love about Bandcamp, man, because I noticed as well Bandcamp actually lets you guys sell your music, and you actually get to keep a hundred percent of the proceeds, if I'm not mistaken. So if any, so if every artist just kind of transitioned and switched all the way to Bandcamp, you know, maybe maybe then Spotify would kind of go out of business or something. You know what I mean? But people go where people go where life is easy. Most definitely. I feel like that's a good idea, too, because if, if everybody did transition that way, it would either put them out of business or make them switch up to where they start offering artists a lot more. Well, hopefully we uh, hopefully this interview, people hear it and people can actually, like, you know, l listen to what we're saying, man, and maybe maybe make that change over to Bandcamp, you know? Most definitely. And also, on September 21st of 2022, you actually released your most most recently released single titled Hold On. I was wondering if you can actually tell us a bit more about this song, and of course, where can we actually buy or stream ourselves a copy of it today? Um, Hold On is my song for, because this month, uh, September, is Suicide Awareness Month, so Hold On is my anti-suicide song. I'm trying to give hope and some good energy to people that are going through hard times that feel like they don't have anybody. And I'm trying to open people's eyes to check on their friends and check on their people because you never know what somebody's going through, even though they're smiling. And it seems like everything is good. It may not be good. You know, I got a lot of messages after I released this song, actually, from people that I didn't know that were going through things at hard times. And it really, it really, like, made this record worthwhile. We, I, I'm right now living in a... Tempe, Arizona, and we lost a whole lot of people to suicide during the pandemic, especially during lockdown when everybody was just by themselves. And that's where I really got the idea for this record because I just really want people, you know, just give it another day. You never know. It might be really, really hard today, but tomorrow, man, make everything worthwhile. And, you know, you can find that on all streaming platforms. It's everywhere. And I have to ask, man, what is next for yourself, KT Gibson? Is there anything we happen to miss during uh, tonight's interview? Anything else you still want to talk about or promote? That that way, our listeners can actually, you know, check. I uh, keep keep updated on everything you got going on. Right now, I'm playing the singles game, so we got a bunch more singles coming. Uh, we're setting up for videos. We're getting all our videos in order, so a lot of videos are going to come. I haven't shot a video in a minute. I just really been working on getting my marketing and everything together. But um, that and shows, I'm booking shows all over the place, especially like uh, mom and pop venues. I'm trying to take it back to the old school where we hit these small towns and really give them, you know, something to believe in and boost these numbers up that way instead of trying to, like, fight through the rat race of everybody else in all these major cities. So just look for me to show up in y'all hometowns, man. Especially in Canada, I'm trying to come over there and rock. Y'all got anything for me, let me know. I, can't, I ain't got no problem coming over here. We pretty much cousins being from Detroit. <laughs> I got to say, yeah, I believe Windsor's is right across the border as well. So literally, definitely cousins. Yep, most definitely. We right across the bridge. So if we got any uh, got Canadian uh, promoters listening, you guys already know what to do. Make sure you hit up uh, KT and actually get him locked locked and booked for a Canadian performance. Most definitely. I would love that, man. I love Canada. I've been going to Canada since I was a little kid, so... That'll be a dream come true to be able to go over there and perform. 
And also, man, this is the time to interview quickly that I give a chance for the individual that does slide into the radio station airwaves. There's just a chance to give like shout outs to whomever they want to give shout outs to. But most of all, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on everything you got going on past, present and future if they're not already doing so. Yeah, man, I'd like to definitely shout out uh, Detroit. I love to definitely shout out shout out Arizona. Uh, all my people that I do music with on um, both scenes, I'm real proud of y'all, and I love to see it, man. Both scenes are growing really, really strong, and it's a blessing to be a part of both of those. Uh, shout out my gang, Real World uh, Media Group, The Misfits, uh, Guarded Hope, because I'm a part of a, uh, a nonprofit organization where we're out doing, like, hydrate the homeless in the summers and everything, especially out here. We're trying to make that go global. And uh, you can find any updates on me. Just search KT Gibson. That's G-I-P-S-O-N, P, not a B, P is in Paul, P is in process, P is in progress uh, on anything, and you'll be able to find me, especially, like, Instagram. Like, I do a lot of my posting on Instagram, Facebook. But everything is under KT Gibson. I keep everything pretty, you know, formal and tight-knit. And I gotta say first and foremost, KT, thank you so much, man, for just giving us a bit of your time here this evening and sliding into the 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM dial, man. It definitely was an honor and most definitely a privilege, and hopefully down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. Most definitely, man. Let me know. I'm always down, dude. You got family and me. I appreciate you guys hitting me up and taking the time out of your busy schedule to have me on, man. It's, it's been an honor, and this has been a very good interview. I love it. Hey, man, thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. I always make sure to try my best to do research. That way individuals can not only know about what you currently got going on, but also learn a little bit more about you as well. I always find it helps bring uh, bring the fans a little bit closer to their favorite artists as well. Yeah, most definitely. I like that you have some good questions. You took it all the way back. <laughs> hey, man, I, I definitely try my best. My, my saying is if the Internet has it, I'm most definitely going to find it. So I, I always make sure I do my research on every individual. I like giving individuals like yourself and every other guest the same amount of respect. And, you know, I, I just find it makes the interview, man. Nobody wants to be asked who's your top ten rappers. So, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> same old question. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to say, I don't want to disrespect anyone's grind. You know, people do what they do. But if you come on Outlaw Radio FM, and I'm not trying to give this Suge Knight, you know what I mean, like, Source Awards speech, but if you, <laughs> you come over here, you ain't you ain't gonna have nobody up in your videos. I'm just kidding. No, you, you ain't gonna get asked the questions here on Outlaw Radio FM. <laughs> What's up, man? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, definitely, thank you so much, KT, for, for a bit of your time, man. And definitely have yourself a phenomenal weekend, man. I'm pretty sure down the line, we definitely shall talk, talk again soon. Most definitely. Feel free to hit my line. Door's always open, brother. Hey, man, same goes for you, man. Thank you so much again. Thank you.